So some of the times we stop, we're going to be stopping and I'm going to be telling you stories of chukapa. And chukapa is creation time in Ananu culture. So they believe that the land was completely bare and these creation beings, ancestral beings, erupted out of the earth and traveled the land, creating everything we see, along with creating the laws in which the Ananu live by. Now the stories I'm allowed to share are at a chichi level, a children's level. And that is because I haven't earned the right to know knowledge beyond that in the Ananu culture. And even if I do hear anything beyond that, I'm not allowed to share it. I don't have the right or the responsibility to share it. So the first story I'm going to tell you about is about two snakes. Now in the National Park we have 13 species of snakes. Of the 13, only four are non-venomous. So if you see a snake, don't touch it. <laughs> in saying that, uh, it did get really cold a few weeks ago. We started coming into our winter season. This week we've just had a big heat, a big heat wave come through. Last bit of summer decided to pop through. Um, so most of them have hibernated. So you're pretty safe at the moment. Our first snake is a python. Her name is Kunia. And Kunia is the female Woma python, one of the four that are safe. It's a beautiful stripy python. She was off to the east of Uluru at Earl Dunda, and she had a bad feeling in her stomach. She felt like she needed to come to Uluru, but she just laid some eggs. So she created an inma, a ceremony, to join those eggs together in a ring so she could wear them like a necklace and bring them with her rather than leave them behind. So she brought them to Uluru and she left them at a safe place down further towards the northern side. Now, this is something the Woma python actually does. So they use like a mucus and join the eggs to themselves so they can move them if they need to. She's then come around to this side of Uluru and if we look up to this section of the rock, you can see the wavy line in the rock. That is Kunia coming in towards Mudajulu waterhole. That mark, the marks of these ancestral beings is called Chukaricha, which means evidence of creation time. So she's come in and she's come across her nephew and he had a big spear in his thigh. This is the traditional form of punishment in this land. Apparently, if you do something bad enough, it'll still be done. So she's come across, he's got a big spear in his thigh. Now part of the punishment is, the person who punishes you is meant to then care for you until you're well again, which seems strange, but you're not gonna forget the punishment of a spear to the thigh. And I'm sure the whole time they're looking after you, they're gonna keep reminding you about what you've done wrong. So Kunia's nephew had traveled through Liru land. Liru means poisonous snake, or King Brown. He'd broken their law, and instead of staying and taking his punishment, he ran. So the Liru men chased him down, throwing spears until one got him through the thigh. Liru Wati, Liru Man, the leader, he was meant to look after Kunia's nephew until he was well. But he decided that seeing as he didn't take his punishment like a man, he deserved to die. So Liru Wati sat over here and watched nephew. Kunia found out all of this. This enraged her. So she changed from her python form into her human form and she approached Liru Wadi, performing a ritual dance showing that she was ready for battle. She picked up her wana, her digging stick, and she hit Liru Wadi over the head. If we look up on this rock, the small crack to the right, that's where she's hit him over the head. Liru Wadi stood up, dusted himself off and laughed at Kunia. Is that all you've got? I'm the almighty Liru. It's going to take more than that to keep me down. What happens if you laugh at an angry woman? <laughs> yeah. She summoned all her strength, picked up her wana and hit him over the head as hard as she could. And that's the big crack we see. And to the left, there's a horizontal line. And that is Liru Wadi's eye closing as life left his body. Kuni has then gone and picked up her nephew and carried him down to Murajulu waterhole. There she created her final inma, her final ceremony, joining their two spirits into one, creating the rainbow serpent that watches over and looks after the waterhole today. And we'll see that shortly. We will go down to the waterhole and to a cave down there. But first, we're gonna go ahead and look at one of my favorite caves. Before we do though, all of these stories that were told to the Chichi, the children, were told to teach them about laws and ways of life. This one teaches about trusting your intuition, that gut feeling. It also teaches about the laws of punishment on this land. Speed of the thigh and then caring for the person you punish. 
it also starts teaching about a woman's role within the community. So they don't have nuclear family like parents and children. It is all of the women in a community look after all of the children. They extend their family to being the full community. And literally what he paid for his life, paid with his life for doing the wrong thing by a child and that woman did what she had to to protect him. Cool, let's jump up, we'll keep going, get into the shade.